You're, You're with the Breaker Leggers, Leggers. And we're on London South Bank at the National Theatre. To see part two of Tony Kushner's epic Angels in America, Perestroika. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. it. So I've already seen part one earlier today. So if you haven't seen our review already, go and find it now. There'll be a link at the end of this video if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, you can search for it. Yes, go now. We don't want to give too much away. Okay. You gone? Have you gone? Okay. Okay. So what's happened so far with Angels in America part one? So in part one, we have Harper and Joe Pitt, a married Mormon couple. Harper has recently found out that her husband is homosexual. He's come out to his mother, who's come to New York to find him, and it's also been uncovered that he's been in a relationship with lawyer Roy Cohn. What's happening with Roy Cohn? Roy Cohn has been played by Nathan Lane. He's doing an amazing job. He's a top prosecutor, and he has been diagnosed as having AIDS, although he's in complete denial of this at this moment in time, and he's convinced um, himself, in a way, that he actually has liver cancer because of the stigma that will go with the fact of him having AIDS because it's being linked to drug takers and homosexuals. He's also risking losing his place at the bar. He's just received a letter to say that his position is in jeopardy as one of the top prosecutors in the country. Due to some um, dilly-dallying and potential corruption going on, fiddling with the rules. We've also got Prior Walter, Prior being played by Andrew Garfield. Doing an amazing job. And his partner played by James McArdle. James McArdle is wrestling at the moment with his partner who is um, going through the symptoms of AIDS and um, he doesn't do death or dying or disease very well at all and currently hates himself for bailing on him, running out the door when really he should be there. In this part we're going to find out whether their relationship can be mended, what the fate of Prior Walter is going to be, whether Roy Cohen is going to lose his place at the bar and his life. Whether and what is the meaning of all these hallucinations? Yeah, they're these all, angelic characters. They're all having, seem to be having hallucinations. Harper is on a, a Valium herself, so she's hallucinating due to the medication, but her hallucinations are crossing over into um, what prior Walters is hallucinations, and they're kind of in a dream state where that sounds very confusing, but honestly, it's a lot better than it sounds. Well, it took three hours to explain it to get us to where we are now, so um, you know, it is explained. And how did the act end? It ended on a cliffhanger. We were visited by an angel who came down to see Pryor and it ended on that cliffhanger. With Pryor being told that he is a prophet. So how long does this part run for? What's the timings? Well, it's currently coming in at around four hours plus intervals. So we, we might be out this time today at some point. Tomorrow, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? So let's see. Stay tuned and we'll catch you at the intervals. So we've come to the first interval of Angels in America part two, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. Go! So it slowed down by a lot. This act was an hour and a half. The set is almost completely different. They've got rid of the set from the first one. So it's very bare stage with set pieces coming down, but still some very strong performances and nice scenes. Definite gear shift downwards for this one. It feels like a total change of pace, although beautiful performances still, especially by Andrew Garfield and Nathan Lane, are really helping to keep the piece buoyant. And Nathan Lane is hilarious. He's coming with timing. He's expert. He has some really good interaction between him and some really nice interplay on themes between race and sexuality. So we've come to the final interval of this epic, that is the second part of Angels in America. It's way past our bedtime already. It is 10 o'clock and we've still got a whole act to go, which means it is time for the final 30 second Breaker Leggers interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. Go! What are you making of this act then? Yeah, really good. Feels like we're getting a lot of resolution. It's coming to a conclusion. Some of the plot points are being tied up. Still fantastic performances. Nathan Lane, I can't go enough for the guy. He is sensational. Yes, he is fantastic. Another phenomenal part, which we haven't mentioned so far, is the actor Nathan Jarrett Stewart. Stuart Jarrett. Stuart Jarrett, who is phenomenal. Also, some really good stuff. Yeah, he's, um, he's playing Belize, which is Roy's nurse and Pryor's friend, and he has some great lines. Definitely worth mention. 
we've come to the end of the second part of Angels in America. So how did you find that epic? Epic, absolutely epic. It's a massive story. It's the stories, the way they're interconnected. It is an absolute genius piece of writing. As for the second part compared to the first, for me, something fell away in the second part, uh, left me a little bit wanton. I really enjoyed some of the production themes that were explored in part one, but they weren't carried across to part two, and it definitely had a change of pace. Yeah, the same that was definitely more mythical. I guess it will change in pace because you've got more characters kind of near to death, I guess, in a way. So there's a lot more hospital beds, um, although it does still move quite well between scenes. A much more bare stage for the second um, part two um, and use of lighting to differentiate between the different areas. Um, although saying that, the audience was right behind everything that was going on. Strength of the writing, the um, parts are really well defined and there were numerous um, rounds of applause for certain characters upon the delivery of certain lines. So um, definite strong thumbs up for the characters and their delivery and the writing. Totally engaged throughout. I didn't once feel um, confused or tired or lost regardless and despite of the length of the piece. So that is really a testament to the production itself. Marianne Elliott, someone I've admired for a long, long time, her work on Curious Into the Dog in the Nighttime in particular, has delivered a wonderful production. Although it does feel like two very distinct different pieces, even though it makes up part of one of the same story. Now, I'm pretty exhausted and that's quite tiring to sit through both performances in one day, so I can't imagine how tired the cast are. So they are doing a phenomenal job to deliver these two pieces, which are the one big text. So Gotta say, without exception, the cast are perfectly cast. Phenomenal. The, yes, uh, and uh, delivered with such enthusiasm, gusto and respect for the piece, which is so important. You couldn't hope to see a better cast for this piece. Absolutely. So, I bet you're wondering how many legs? For Perestroika, that's part two of Angels in America by Tony Kushner, we are going to give... Four! Four legs for this one. Yeah, not quite as engaging as the first half. Felt the flow of the first half and the delivery, I don't think it was in the text, I do think it's more in the production, worked better for me in part one. But only just. You need to see both parts. It's a piece that deserves to be seen in full. It is a groundbreaking piece of theatre that is almost as relative now as it was at the time. So definitely see it as one you need to have in your repertoire. There are going to be Olivier Nods next season, next year, no doubt about it. For sure. We're the Breaker Leggers and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Roy Cohn is played by Nathan Lane and he's been um, diagnosed as having HIV. But the it's big... not worse than that. It's worse, it's worse than, than that. It's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead, Jim.